Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a friendly vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Check out the comment section below because they are also a wealth of information too. Today is going to be a busy one. I'm going to manage my mini wedge system here with the European night crawlers, check in on the new bin we made last time, and see the huge ENCs gifted to me from Bobby Davenport at New Soil Worm Farm in Alabama. Today's topic is going to be looking at the difference between this system, which is kind of a mini wedge, and what we see in blue, which is twice the length of this. Blue is a complete 55 gallon drum, and this is half at 27 ish, which is 105 and 210 liters, respectively. All right, let's take a look at these guys, do a full maintenance on them, and we'll talk about the differences between this system and blue. This is all based on basically the questions that I've had from my worm family in the comments below, things that everybody is interested in knowing as to why you would have one versus the other. All right, let me get you set down and we'll start digging in. Before we start digging in, check this out. This is what warm weather does for worms. They just really go nuts. The top of this here where that lid was on is 100% castings. Crazy, huh? So as I said, today's topic is going to be the difference between a large wedge system and this one, which is smaller. It is spring-summer here in central Illinois, which means the temperature is oscillating between 70 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 21 to 32 Celsius. My basement stays between 16 Celsius and 27 Celsius, and about 50% humidity because we have had a lot of rain, which, although annoying, is very good for the garden and for the farmers. So the topic did come from my viewers, and they have asked me, you know, do I really need to stick two ends of a barrel together and make something like blue, or will a half a barrel be good enough? So today we're going to address that sort of situation, and it kind of expands into different questions that I have also had. So right now you're seeing that the moisture is very good in the bin, even at this part here. I am not going to be able to get a, a harvest off of this. This is just way too wet. So what we are going to do is we're going to get the oxygen in here and make sure that the worms have everything they need. You can see at the bottom it's getting pretty muddy, which means it's time to get some, some air in here. It's been about three weeks since we've gone in here and had a look at these guys. So it is a, you know, definitely about due to do a fluffing and make sure that nothing is going south. Everything smells good. There's no off smells right now. So that just means everything is going swimmingly. So one of the differences between the large wedge system and this, which was I consider a mini wedge system, is that blue has three distinct zones. A finished zone, a foraging zone, and then a feeding zone. This bin does not. As you can tell, there is not a lot of difference between right here, which is the end, which hasn't been fed in maybe five or six months, and this part here, which was fed about three or four months ago. There's not a big difference. I mean, you can definitely see the graduations in blue, whereas with this one, you really don't. And one of the things that kind of comes from that is that you do get a smaller harvest and the harvests are not quite as complete. So even over here in what is the finished part, you will still see pieces of paper that are not digested and seeds of various things. Um, and, you know, honestly, does it matter? Well, I sift everything because I use mine as a top dressing for my bonsais as one of the largest reasons that I use the worm castings. So to me, it kind of does make a difference because I get less of a harvest and then on top of that, it is less refined. So that means more sifting for me. But if you don't care um, the difference between truly fine castings and you know semi-finished castings, then it's really not gonna be a problem from you. All right, let me get you moved over so we can look at the feeding end. Okay, so we're looking at the middle part here. And what you are seeing is a lot more worms. So just from a perspective of that, you definitely can tell the difference between the, the far finished zone and the intermediate zone where they're foraging. You can see many more worms. That is, that is basically what the difference is. 
And then one of the other things is, um, you know, does it, does it really matter? If you're trying to get fast harvests, maybe it does. But if you're content to basically get a harvest that is not really siftable every couple of months, you know, then, then that's fine. But like me, it is a little annoying that I have to wait for it to dry out and sift and then put everything back that's not digested. But one of the things that I would say is the cause of these differences is where I live. And where I live, we get very hot summers and we get very cold winters. So the swing in the temperature that this bin experiences, even in a basement, are pretty extreme. So it will go down to about 50 degrees, um, 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement. And then it will get as high as 85 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. So the worms do work faster when it's warmer, and then when it's colder, they work slower. So I do see a little bit of a multiplication of that as it relates to this kind of a bin. So when we, so when we look at the three different zones for blue, the portion where it is resting or curing, where it's drying down, the worms are leaving, the cocoons are hatching, all that sort of stuff, it doesn't really get a chance to happen in this bin so much. We pretty much have a foraging part and a feeding part. So that is the, the difference between the two. So when in the winter, if I need castings for seed starting, etc., I know that I go to blue for that. In the wintertime, these guys have slowed down and they don't really cure or finish up. They stay throughout the entire year. Now, if you just happen to be in an area that's pretty tropical, where your worms can stay at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for the entire year, you may not experience this slowdown. All right, let me get you to move down to the feeding zone. So you may not, you know, have that slowdown, which means that it won't make any difference. It won't make a difference if you have a half of a 55-gallon bin or a whole one. Um, if it stays warm year-round, then I'm willing to bet that you can get those super done castings year-round. In the last video, I talked about the difference between a brand new bin and a mature bin, and if you want to check that out, I will put that up top. It kind of is a companion to this because it touches on some of the same subjects, but from a different point of view. Some people want to know, why is my new bin not meeting my expectations? And that video takes care of that. So now we are down to the feeding zone here and they have made some very nice castings. It is about 80 degrees in my basement right now and probably over 50% humidity. So these guys are definitely in the party zone. They absolutely love to be nice and warm. Although the European night crawlers do fairly well at colder temperatures as well. Last time we harvested about two gallons out of this bin and then we fed them about a gallon of people food and then a quart of puree and then two gallons of bedding. And with some of the worms, we started a new bin, which is what we're going to do also today. We're going to look in on that bin that we just started. And also a surprise, they got some new blood. So we got a pound of breeder size European night crawlers that also went into that new bin. So today, when we look in, we'll be able to see those monsters. I haven't probably seen monsters like that in a good long time. They tend to stay smaller in my bin. I'm not seeing any proper worm balls here, but that is fine. They are very well concentrated in this part of the bin. So it will not be a problem to grab another good handful from this bin and start another new bin so that in a month or so, I'll be able to start the other half of this worm bin. I didn't have time over the winter because, or I could not use both half barrels over the winter because my plants were living in that space. And now that the plants are outside, game on, we can have another worm bin. Let's move up here and then let's see what we're gonna get for food today. First things first, couple handfuls of bedding. This is the prepared bedding that has the shredded cardboard. This time it's peat moss and also some kelp meal to help the biology get rolling. Okay, it's gonna be a lot of food this time, 
there is a lot of worms in here and it's also nice and warm. I apparently bought these a couple months ago and did not manage to uh, get them cooked in time. So they molded. So we'll get to see a little bit of an experiment on that the next time we check in on this bin. Additionally, I've got this bowl of puree and this time it is pumpkin and eggshell. Then to top it all off, they're gonna get another three gallons of bedding to cover that up. So that will leave everything nice and sealed from any potential marauders that might be in the basement looking for a fast meal. Okay, so these guys are all set. Let's go look at the new bins. Okay, next up we have the bin we made last time and all the worms that were from the previous European Nightcrawler bin as well as the new ones from New Soil. And then today we're going to take a sampling of the worms from the bin again and put them in here and feed them up. All right, let's have a look. I did not do a proper unboxing for the New Soil worms because it was so far from when the European Nightcrawlers were gonna have their next video. But I will show you a little bit of a snippet from when they arrived. A box came priority, had all kinds of stickers on top. Um, unfortunately, when I opened up the, the box, it appears that some did escape. So we've got a little bit of worm jerky there. And it looks as though some have also escaped into the, uh, the foil interior of the box here. But they are definitely some nice big euros. Look at the size of them, guys. So not, so this is all that escaped out of the mesh bag. So I'm going to have to say that I do not think that the mesh bag is an adequate shipping method. But these are some textbook beautiful euros. Um, and I'm sure they'll be happy to get into some nice damp soil there. And then we will take a look and see how these guys are doing. Look at that beastie. Holy cow. What a wonderful worm. Good worm. And they are all that size. From what I understand, that is what he sells is the, the breeder worms. Now, as an aside, if you look at the difference between these two worms, this worm has really got a red clitellum. This worm here has a very red clitellum, which means it just had a cocoon. Whereas this one is a little bit more peachy color, which means it did not just have a cocoon. In case you're ever wondering about that, apparently the whole breeding cycle of a worm is um, pretty rough. I mean, giving birth as a human is no joke, but uh, basically it does some damage, which you can see um, in your worm. So in case you're wondering why they're red, that's what's happening there. And as they are breeders, they definitely have been doing some breeding. But this bin, um, it has, you know, we've made a little bit of the castings, but for the most part, this bin is just worms and bedding, which is to be expected only three weeks from the last time we checked in on it. They have not been fed. So I'm gonna give them a decent size feeding, especially since those new worms are really, um, they're big worms, so they're gonna eat more than what the original population of this bin was going to have. So we're going to probably give them probably double the amount of food. I'm not seeing that banana anywhere that I fed them last time. And when you first get worms, they're kind of in shock just from the transport, etc. These worms all showed up intact, perfectly healthy. As far as I can tell, I haven't lost any of them. Um, when they're stressed out, they kind of shrink up like that. But if I was to stand here for a little bit, this guy would end up stretching out and being perfectly comfortable being a big, huge worm. He's just trying to, he doesn't know that I'm not a predator because he's only been my worm baby for less than a month. He'll get it. So let's get these guys a little bit of food and then we will start the new bin. Okay, so these guys are going to get half of an ear of corn and then some unfrozen apples. So that corn should be 
pretty fast food. I would expect them to be able to eat that pretty quickly. And then the uh, unfrozen apple is probably going to be a slower food that's going to take them several weeks in order to go through it. And then I'm going to give these guys some of the grit slurry that I gave the big worms. So again, that's just eggshell and a little bit of pumpkin rind. I did not give them any grit to begin with, so this is their first inoculation of grit um, into itself. And then I'm just going to cover these guys up, and then they are ready to roll until the next time. All right, let's get you moved around, and let's start a brand new bin again today. As always, if you have any questions, put those down in the comments. I do try and get to every single comment, um, no matter what. So if you have questions about any of the recipes or the worms or the food, um, please ask them below. And then also make sure you keep an eye on the comments too. read what other people have said. You might pick up some tips that I didn't even think of. So here we are, no worms. And then now we probably have a half to probably a quarter pound of worms. Uh, put in the comments below. How do you th how many worms do you think I put in there? I don't mean maybe a couple three hundred maybe. Some of them are pretty small. And then I'm going to incorporate them in. So hopefully there won't be much of a shock because they have their own castings that I brought with them. And then these guys are going to get some food too. And because it is so nice and warm here in the basement now, I'm going to give them a little bit more food than I did the last time I started a worm bin. I'm going to give them the same amount of food that I gave the other guys. And let's make a note of this and see who does better. Maybe next time we can start the other half of the 55-gallon drum, and then we'll have two European Nightcrawler mini wedges. All right, guys, if you like the European Nightcrawlers, I have a playlist that I will put right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.